we're going to discuss hypothesis testing. Hypothesis is an assertion or a conjecture about one or more population. Hypothesis testing is a decision-making process for evaluating claims about a population based on the characteristics of a sample presumably coming from the population. So in hypothesis testing, we're going to evaluate if the claim is true or not based on the characteristics of the sample. So we have two types of hypothesis. The first one is the null hypothesis, denoted by HO. It's a statement of zero or no difference between two means, between a parameter and a specific value, or between two parameters, meaning it is a statement where two means are equal, a parameter and a specific value are equal, or two parameters are equal. In symbol, we have mu sub 1 is equal to mu sub 2. The second one is the alternative hypothesis, denoted by HA. It's a statement of a difference between two means, between a parameter and specific value, or between two parameters. Meaning, two means are not equal, a parameter and a specific value are not equal, or two parameters are not equal. In symbol, we have mu sub 1 is not equal to mu sub 2, or mu sub 1 is greater than mu sub 2, or mu sub 1 is less than mu sub 2. In hypothesis testing, the null hypothesis is the first to be created. Then it will depend on the evaluation of data or evidences gathered if the null hypothesis will be accepted or rejected. If in case the null hypothesis is rejected, then the alternative hypothesis comes in. Let's have this given statement and it is a null hypothesis. It says that the average age of grade 11 students is 16 years old. In symbol, we have mu is equal to 16. To test the claim, you may survey a sample of 50 students and get their average age. If in case the average age obtained from the sample is 16 years old, then the claim is accepted. While, if the average age obtained from the sample is not 16 years old, then the claim has to be rejected. And this is where the alternative hypothesis comes in. So we may use the symbol mu is not equal to 16. Suppose the average age from the sample is 15 years old, then we're going to use the symbol mu is less than 16. And if the average age obtained from the sample is 17 years old, then we're going to use the symbol mu is greater than 16. Let us discuss the one-tailed and two-tailed test. When the alternative hypothesis uses not equal to symbol, the test is said to be non-directional or two-tailed. On the other hand, if it utilizes greater than or less than symbol, the test is said to be directional or one-tailed. The symbol greater than indicates a right-tailed direction and it uses the words like greater than, more than, increase, improve, and the like. The symbol less than indicates a left-tailed direction and it uses the words like less than, smaller, decrease, and the like. Let us determine if the given test 
describe a two-tailed or a one-tailed. Let's have the first one. Modular distance learning affects the academic performance of the students. So this is a two-tailed because affects may indicate a positive or negative result. Another, absenteeism decreases the level of academic performance of a student. And this is a one-tailed, particularly it is a left-tailed direction because decreases indicates a negative result. Study habit improves the level of academic performance of a student. This is a, again, this is a one-tailed and it is a right-tailed direction because improves indicates a positive result. Let us now discuss the significance level and rejection region. Significance level, denoted by alpha, is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis. The common choices for the level of significance are 0 0.05 and 0 0.01. Significance level is the counterpart of confidence level, denoted by 1 minus alpha. Their sum is equal to 1 or 100%. If the significance level is 0 0.05 or 5%, then the confidence level is 0 0.95 or 95%. And if the significance level is 0 0.01 or 1%, then the confidence level is 0 0.99 or 99%. If you set your significance level to 0 0.05, it means that you have a 5% chance of committing an error of rejecting the null hypothesis. It also means that you are 95% sure that your decision of accepting the alternative hypothesis is correct. If you set your significance level to 0 0.01, it means that you have a 1% chance of committing an error of rejecting the null hypothesis. It also means that you are 99% sure that your decision of accepting the alternative hypothesis is correct. Rejection region refers to the region where the value of the test statistic falls or lies for which the null hypothesis is rejected. Test statistic is a value used to determine the probability needed in decision making. The critical values are the Z values or T values associated with the probabilities of the tails of the normal curve. Here is the summary table of critical values. For the 95% confidence level, which is equal to 5% significance level, the critical values for one tailed are plus minus 1.645. The critical values for two tailed are plus minus 1.96. For the 99% confidence level, which is equal to 1% significance level, the critical values for one tailed are plus minus 2.96. 33 and the critical values for two tailed are plus minus 2.58 referring from the figure at the left if the test statistics fall in the shaded region then you reject the null hypothesis while if it falls in the non-shaded region you accept the null hypothesis and remember that if the absolute value of the computed test statistic is greater than the absolute value of the critical value, then you reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, accept the null hypothesis. Let us determine if the Z value is in the rejection region or not given the following conditions. Number one, 
the z value is 2 the significance level is 0 0.05 and the test is two-tailed so the critical values are plus minus 1.96 and the given test statistic is 2 therefore it falls in the rejection region and it rejects the null hypothesis number two the z value is 1.75 the significance level is 0 0.05 the test is two-tailed the critical values are plus minus 1.96 the test statistic is 1.75, therefore, it falls in the acceptance region and it accepts or does not reject the null hypothesis. Number 3. The z-value is 2. The significance level is 0 0.01. The test is 2-tailed. The critical values are plus minus 2.58. The test statistic is 2, therefore, it falls in the acceptance region and it accepts or does not reject the null hypothesis. Number four, the z value is 3.2, the significance level is 0 0.01, and the test is two tailed. The critical values are plus minus 2.58, the test statistic is 3.2, therefore, it falls in the rejection region and it rejects the null hypothesis. Number five, the z value is 1.75. The significance level is 0 0.05 and the test is one tail. The critical value is plus 1.645. The test statistic is 1.75. Therefore, it falls in the rejection region and it rejects the null hypothesis. Number six, the C value is 1.5. The significance level is 0 0.05. And the test is one tail. The critical value is plus 1.645. The test statistic is 1.5. Therefore, it falls in the acceptance region and it accepts or does not reject the null hypothesis. Number seven. The z value is 1.75. The significance level is 0 0.01. And the test is one tail. The critical value is plus. 2.33 the test statistic is 1.75 therefore it falls in the acceptance region and it accepts or does not reject the null hypothesis and number eight the z value is negative 2.5 the significance level is 0 0.01 and the test is one tail the critical value is negative or minus 2.33 the test statistic is negative or minus 2.5. Therefore, it falls in the rejection region and it rejects the null hypothesis. Let us now discuss the types of errors in hypothesis testing. Here is the table for type 1 and type 2 errors. If the null hypothesis is true, it is considered a type 1 error if you reject the null hypothesis because the correct decision should be do not reject or accept the null hypothesis if the null hypothesis is false it is considered a type 2 error if you accept or do not reject the null hypothesis because the correct decision should be reject the null hypothesis type 1 error is committed when the null hypothesis is true and you reject it and type 2 error is committed when the null hypothesis is false and you accept it or you fail to reject it let us determine the type of error committed in its statement the first one is an innocent person is sent to jail this is a type 1 error second one a guilty person is set free and this is a type 2 error in decision making if the person is innocent the correct decision should be set the person free 
It is a type 1 error because the innocent person goes to jail. And if the person is guilty, the correct decision should be the person goes to jail. It is a type 2 error because the guilty person is set free. Let us once again determine the type of error committed in its statement. Number 1. The cheater passed the test. It is a type 2 error because the null hypothesis is false but it was accepted. Number 2. A registered voter failed to vote. This is a type 1 error because the null hypothesis is true but it was rejected. Number 3. A senior citizen was not given a fair discount. This is a type 1 error because the null hypothesis is true but it was rejected. Number 4. An unvaccinated person was allowed to roam around. This is a type 2 error because the null hypothesis is false but it was accepted.